First of all, welcome to the 2023 Casper Cup and Road America. Uh, I'm Brian Garsha, it's Mark Alexander, we're the co-chairs for this year's event. Uh, appreciate all you guys making the trip out here. We've got a lot of people that came a long way uh, to be here. I really appreciate that and I hope that you guys appreciate what a unique setup you have here, getting 40 cars of that age um, together on track at the same time. Uh, you know, as years go by, the definition of vintage cars uh, changes and the groups get more and more mixed. So kind of the point of vintage racing outside of enjoying and celebrating the cars, uh, for some of us that, you know, didn't race back in period is trying to uh, pretend that you did and, re you know, imagine what it would have been like so to have a grid of 40 triumphs, you know, on a historic track like this uh, is a good thing. I think it's one of the best things going in vintage racing right now. Um, this is the 21st year of uh, doing that. We're doing it in Kaz's honor uh, since we lost him a few years ago. And um, hopefully you guys will continue to support the event uh, in years to come. We're getting real close to going out for the Kastner Cup. I qualified 27th of 42. So this should be a good race.
right, first of all, excellent race by everyone. Thank you so much. That was great watching you roll out on grid. It was good watching you on track. Um, top to bottom, clean racing. Everybody, for the most part, uh, came through that okay. So give yourself a round of applause. That was a great race. Thanks for the time. Um, I know Mark's got a few other things to say. We've got some questions we want to ask Joe. We're trying to put him, uh, not put him on the spot too much. Uh, but I hope everybody here understands what a big influence Joe is on not just the Triumph community, but just Midwest vintage racing in particular. So we, I know you have some things maybe to say about Cass a little bit later. Uh, but uh, just for everyone's knowledge, we've got newer folks in the paddock now uh, that maybe haven't been racing with us for 30 years. Talk to us a little bit about uh, you meeting Cass and how you guys got this whole Casper Cup thing going. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, let me start out with uh, Morty Dunn. We were going to have a, a 50th anniversary race at Mid-Ohio and we started organizing that and I got an email from Morty. Morty said, why don't we invite Cass? So we did. You know, Cass was one of those guys that, that I read about in, in Car Driver Magazine, Road and Track, and I thought, well, this is, this is, this is great. And he and Peggy King. We had about 50 cars running that weekend at, uh, at Mid-Ohio. It was a complete and total success. Eight of the cars came from England in a lorry. They packed in, they had to dismantle one car just a little bit in order to get them in, but the Brits brought eight cars over. And that lorry, they rolled it off the, the ship and drove it to Mid-Ohio. You know, that, that, that was absolutely amazing. Uh, at the end of the weekend, Cass thinks it was his idea. I think it was mine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can't argue now. Yeah, right. And Cass, I said, would you like to continue this? I didn't know him. You know, I just didn't know him at all. And I said, would you like to continue this on as a Castner Cup? And he was very, very excited about that. And that's, that's when we went the first year to Mossport. And that was an amazing weekend. That really kind of set the stage. And as you guys already know, that it, it isn't the guy that crosses the finish line first that wins this. The guy that crossed the finish line at that time uh, first was Tony Drews. But his dad started at the back of the pack with, with a bad starter motor, worked his way all the way up to the front right behind Tony. And, and he was awarded the Casper Cup. So that, that starts out, uh, you know, the Casper Cup. The, the, the next 20 years have just been amazing. Coast to coast, all of us having a good time, uh, doing a good job. Is there anything more that, that I could say about that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've actually, I've got one cast story that I meant to share earlier, and I'm not sure, Joe, if I even had a chance to share this with you, but I did tell Mark. Uh, when I reached out to Road America uh, to, to try to uh, see if they were interested in hosting us this year, um, I, I wasn't sure if they were going to know. I came prepared with stories of what this event is and you know, who Kaz was. And um, Jack Worley, who I'm sure a lot of you maybe that run with HSR and stuff know, uh, who's the technical director for Road America for this event, shared a story that I thought you know tells you everything you know, need to know about Kaz. So in the late 60s, um, Jack was stationed at Great Lakes uh, Naval uh, Station north of Chicago. And um, while he was stationed there, he bought a Spitfire and was campaigning it at Blackhawk Farms and um, started getting, you know, building his interest in developing this car. And then he got deployed uh, to Vietnam. And while he was in Vietnam, uh, wrote a letter to Kaz about prepping his car and, um, you know, asked a bunch of questions. And uh, Kaz wrote back and they started a correspondence that lasted Jack's entire time in Vietnam. And, they ran into each other 20 years later, and he still remembered that he was the, uh, you know, the GI in uh, 
or sorry, the uh, uh, cadet over in um, Vietnam that was riding back and forth, uh, trying to learn more about his race car while he was half a world away. But he said, Kaz, everything was handwritten and on the same stationery, and he still has some of those letters. So I think that's, that was, I we instantly had an advocate here at the track that understood what this was about. So I just thought it was a good story to share. And that is a good story. If anyone else has anything to share, you know, to me, Cass was this kind of mythical figure, and I was always impressed by the interest he took in us and in me in particular. I'd come in from a session, and he'd wander by, and he had been taking lap times of my car. I mean, why would you know? So and and uh, compliment me on my consistency in lap times and that kind of thing, and. I always felt just touched that he knew who I was and paid attention to that and uh, you know he just he seemed like a really caring person in that way. Uh, at one of the races uh, he took me aside and he handed me a car to stop. His daughter had taken a picture of a shiny portion of my car and they put it on a coffee cup and he gifted it to me and I just thought that was so touching. Uh, so, you know, it, but he was also kind of amused by our he was, yeah. kind of lossy fair attitude towards this whole thing. <laughs> you know, we're not checking the plugs and changing the jets between sessions and things. Uh, it, I, he just seemed like a, a cool dude and I really, really enjoyed having him at the track. He always added something. Yeah, I, I'm Jerry Barker. I, oh. I've known Cass or knew Cass since I was probably about eight years old. Uh, we all lived in the South Bay in California, and he raced his TR3 against my dad in a Porsche. And they were few very competitive people. And uh, I was in, into building model cars at the time, I was just a kid. And Casco Moore Norhouse was my dad. I, they didn't have a model car of a Porsche Speedster, but they had one of a TR3. So I built one of a TR3 and painted the shepherd lights and the butt his one guy. He showed it to Cass. So kissed my dad off and Cass just loved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and on his, I don't know whether it was 90th birthday, I made another model for him. He had to do it with me. He gave it. Anyway, that was, it was a wonderful time. I, I grew up around Cass. I grew up around the competition department in Southern California. My dad raised Spitfire under Cass's guidance. And uh, the whole competition department was friends of mine. It was just a wonderful way for a kid to grow up and know many people like Cass. So. Hi, everybody. My name is Randy Gus. My name was mentioned a little bit ago. So before I want to get into the, the Cass story that I have, uh, I want to make mention that over to my right uh, is Mr. Johns. And Mr. Johns and my father-in-law raced at Seabrook in Triumphs. And I just need to recognize Mr. Johns. So regarding uh, uh, Mr. Kastner, so he lost his first wife, and he was seriously depressed, as you can imagine. And so we had a race in Southern California at Tustin Military Air Base. Uh, this was early 90s. 97. 97. Yeah. Anyway, uh, my father-in-law shamed me into buying a Triumph to race, because that's what we did. So I bought a car. It happened to be the exact same number that he had when he raced at the mall. So I got it. Uh, Paul Smart, a buddy of mine, helped me put it together. And we got to the track. And so all the triumphs are lined up at this uh, event. And nobody recognizes Cass, except for a fellow named Paul Smock. Some of you may know him. And so he, he came by, and Cass was with his new wife, Peggy. And Paul pulled him aside, and he just lifted him up. Something tremendous to see the triumphs on track. And that started a conversation between Southern California Triumph Group and CAS and go on and on. But before that, he just didn't even want to stop yeah. to visit the triumphs because he was so despondent. But we looked at him up. So, like my whole life racing, I've always followed Morty. 
Morty has always been fast. And I remember at Willow Springs going into turn one behind Morty. Him going through in a TR4 and I had a Spitfire at the time. And I'm going, well, if Morty can do that, I can certainly do that. And I'm always following Morty. Anyway, um, to follow on with Morty's story, that's also how OK to Race Kaz Kasner started. Because we were all bugging him, Kaz, Kaz, you're a hero. And he, that was the first time he signed OK to Race Kaz Kasner on the hard cars. So that was pretty cool. But my story was when we were at Hallett. I think Hallett was the first time kind of the West and the besides me. The first time the West and the East got together and the Midwest got together since it was a central trap. And we were all there having a good time. And it was also the first time we all got radios in the car because, you know, we're big shot racers now. So we put radios in the car. But our problem was we all had the same frequency. <laughs> So of course, you know, Kaz, yeah, Casby and Kaz, you know, he says, "Well, give me the, give me the headset. I'll do splits and, all. you know." So we're running around, running around, and, and uh, all of a sudden, I start hearing plus one, minus three. And then I hear plus two, minus one. You know, and this goes on and on. And I finally figure out he's telling me how far the guy in front of me is and how far the guy behind me is. And Morty's going, "What does that mean? What, what does that mean?" <laughs> You know, Kaz could Kaz could not shake his competitiveness. You know, from from golf, from cars to golf, to you know, driving on the road. Sailing. Sailing was his big thing, but uh, he was a dear friend of mine because I I was fortunate to live near. Him. You know, we, and we formed a great relationship, and I drank a lot of his wine. So the next person that's volunteered here uh, knows a little bit about Kaz, and I bet he has some good stories, Mr. Peter Brock. I uh, can't tell you what an honor it was to, uh, to work with Cavs. He was one of my favorite guys in racing. And the interesting thing is that uh, we were direct competitors. I was running the, uh, the Japanese uh, factory team for uh, huh? Nissan at that time. And of course, Cavs were running the West Coast competition. So we were direct competitors, but we were great friends. And the, uh, the whole concept for doing a K car. Uh, which we did together was that we realized that if we were going to continue as competitors that we had to have cars that people would be interested in and uh, we were looking we were concerned that uh, Triumph wasn't coming up with anything that was going to be able to keep sales wise with only 240 feet that was coming out so that was all the concept behind it let's let's go with a really neat modern looking car for the American market and uh, so that was the, uh, the whole idea behind the cake car on the first set. We really didn't have any time to make the presentation or anything. Gaz, Gaz said just make a couple of sketches of the, that car and I'll take them over to England. I'm on the way over there to talk to him anyway about the competition department and he stopped in and then he talked to the editors of car and driver and they looked at the sketches and they said you can build that and we'll put it on the cover. So, we had that uh, in his pocket to go to the English. So we, uh, we showed up with the, with the special. Uh, and so we uh, went up and uh, showed the sketches to the English and they looked at it and said, that's uh, way too important for us. Beautiful shape all the time, and Bill Hart. And you know, right behind the whole thing is just—it's been such a pleasure and such an honor. So thank you very much. I think we're showing this weekend that we're able to keep it going, and everyone's involvement uh, has been incredible with this. A lot of great feedback, recommendations, uh, and, and how we handle this event and. Prior to coming into this weekend, we had 43 cars. A little bit of attrition on the way in and a little bit of attrition over the weekend, but uh, I think it's pretty incredible, con considering the Pittsburgh race was occurring this weekend, that we were able to secure 43 cars coming in. 
and uh, so uh, in the spirit of the Cassidy Cup and uh, uh, the former recipients, uh, we'll, we're going to turn it into Joe Alexander for uh, the presentation of the Cassidy Cup. Thank you everybody for being here. I, this actually I think is one of the best cast of Cup we've ever had. I it's absolutely true. Cass is, Cass is with us. A, a, a moment about uh, Cass's legacy. I received an email and it, it was just simply, Joe, it's time. And I spent three days with, with Cass and we spent a lot of time getting acquainted in, in ways that we were not able to in the prior 20 years. It was, it was a really great experience for, for me. Uh, I, I learned about a lot about the qualities of that guy. But moreover, he, he was concerned about the Casper Cup. He, he wanted the legacy to continue on. And it looks like we've got a good start on, on doing that. Uh, so, you know, enough about that, that legacy. Part of that legacy has to do with the guy that's going to get the Castle Cup today. Uh, it me a great and huge pleasure to, to announce Tony Drews. There have been years I felt like I was maybe close. I've been to all of these events except one. Jerry may have gone to one more than me. I'm not sure if Jerry's... I know I've seen Jerry at pretty much every one of these as well. You know, I didn't work. You know, I'm the big dude that I get to blame for having a problem or not having a problem and, and uh you know the car is just rock solid uh i feel blessed to be in this community these events are always the highlight of the year and you know having cast around was a highlight of that it's we all miss him and uh thank you so much something out to me that I had not realized. Uh, this is the first Casper Cup recipient uh, that has been a part of a father-son uh, Casper Cup recipient. So, so. I've always admired the trophy of my dad's man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, congratulations, Tony. Absolutely well deserved.